And good afternoon. Hope you're well. How many times have we been here? How many more debates can we have on knife crime? Other than Brexit, I can't think of a single subject that has come up more regularly than this one. And what makes this so profoundly tragic is that the situation is, at least in part, solvable. Where there's a will, there's a way, which brings us to the main problem, a lack of will from our political masters. Today, both the Conservatives and Labour are preening their whiskers on this one, roostering up to show the country who is more serious and determined to solve the issue of young men, and yes, it is mostly young men and young boys dying on our streets on an alarmingly regular basis. As we sit here now, I can think of half a dozen recent horrifying cases of young teens taking the lives of other teens. There are so many, it's easy to lose count. London has a particular problem, but this spreads throughout the country. Some of this will be down to gang culture, some of it revenge, but mostly, and just to compound the futility and tragedy, will be settling scores over minor grievances. Knife crime has risen in England and Wales with almost 50,000 cases recorded in a year. There were 48,716 knife offences reported. That is up from last year by 5%. Now, the tourists say they will outlaw so-called zombie knives. It's a nice idea, but they actually already did this in 2016, and it came to nothing due to the way the laws were drafted. It allowed retailers to carry on selling. If you want to ban knives, Prime Minister, then ban them. Don't fudge around. Labour says they'll pledge to, pledge to tackle the growing epidemic of knife crime. They say they will give young people real support to achieve potential and stay on track. It's nonsense. Our politicians have been monumentally useless in this area, always giving big speeches, but never delivering. I've interviewed every Home Secretary since Jack Straw. Every one of them promised to get tough. None of them ever did. And so the problem has got progressively worse. Even Idris Elba has pitched in. He says there are young people who are carrying knives because they simply don't feel safe. He says we shouldn't want to criminalise these people without offering them an opportunity to feel safe. He argues that we need to think carefully about how we implement a ban on knives. With respect, and I admire that he's got involved in this, but it shouldn't fall to an actor to make these arguments. People will have their own views on what motivates a kid to walk around with a machete in their back pocket. But the starting point has to be a serious response to those caught carrying. Kids walk around with a sense of immunity. They aren't phased or bothered. It's kind of worth the risk. At the very least, somebody caught with any kind of blade for the first time should be tagged and put on a two-year curfew. I've never quite understood why such a simple and obviously effective response is not used. If you're caught carrying for a second time, then a mandatory five-year prison sentence should be in place. If we don't take robust sentencing action, We'll simply be here again next year and the year after. Enough is enough. Young boys are dying on our streets for no reason. Raheem Ahmed, Harry Pittman, Leonardo Reed, Ty Faik, Tyler McDermott. Average age, 16. I could read dozens more names just from the last 12 months. We owe it to their memory and to the next potential victim to stop messing around with silly words and employ some immediate and tough action against those caught carrying knives. With all of that in mind, how should we sentence those that are caught in the act? 0344 499 1000. I want your views on this. The lines are open now.